Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at Mick Taylor's style of playing electric guitar. Uh, Mick Taylor was the guitar player for some of the earlier days of the Rolling Stones. He also played with John Mayall and the Blues Breakers, and just an awesome guitar player. A lot of people say that he's very underrated, and I would have to agree with that. Um, so I listened to a lot of uh, his recordings and came up with the uh, the lead that we're going to learn in this lesson. Now I've got it split into two parts, and you would have seen that in the video and the uh, in the titles there. So the first part is was the more advanced part, and we're actually not going to learn that in this video. We are going to learn the second half though, which is a little easier to play. So I know a lot of you are wanting to play lead and just getting into it. Um, and even if you're a more advanced player, there's still a lot of great licks that you can learn from this. So we're going to learn in this video the part two, or the easier part. Now if you want to download the tablature and the jam tracks, and I've got, uh, I've got lots of different jam tracks that go with this. I've got the, ver the easier version, the more difficult version. I've got a version without the guitar. Uh, so that you can fill in space. You can get all of that, the tablature, and the part two video at activemelody.com. You're going to want to look for EP135. That's a lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with the first video, which will be the easier part of the solo, or the second half through. All right, so I'm playing through the Les Paul Studio. This was the uh, guitar I picked up uh, here in Nashville, used at a guitar center for 300 bucks. It's a great sounding, great playing guitar. Um, and so just keep your eyes out for good deals because they're out there. Uh, now I have the pickup selector switch on the bridge pickup and I have the tone and the volume all the way up at 10. For overdrive I'm using a Tube Screamer uh, TS-808 pedal which is made by Ibanez and I have the overdrive at about 60% uh, and the tone and uh, level, or sorry, tone and the volume are at about 50%. Um, all right, so as I mentioned in the intro, uh, we're going to be learning the easier, uh, the part two version of the solo. As you, as you can see, it loops through, and the second time through, I did something that wasn't quite as fast and, uh, and was actually a lot easier to play. So that's what we're going to be breaking down. I want to go ahead and play through it now real quick by myself so that you have a, an isolated version of it without the jam track. And then we're going to get into breaking it down note for note uh, and go through all of that and... I'm going to show you where those notes come from as well. I think that's always important. So that ultimately you can take this, these licks and apply them to your own lead. So if you're ever at a jam session or whatever, you'll be able to play some of these licks. That's what, that's what you want to try and achieve. Okay, so here's what we're going to learn. And it can repeat. Or you can go into the part one if you feel uh, so inclined. So let's learn that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this E. And what I'm doing, I put my hand on the fretboard and make an E chord, although you don't really have to because what you're doing is you're playing the open sixth string first, which is an E, the low E. And I do that with a down stroke with the right hand. And then I'm going to do an up stroke with my uh, right hand on the one string or the one and two string if you happen to bump the two string. So that's the first thing that happens. So it's down, up. Get in tune. Okay, now the next thing. I do a hammer on here onto the third fret second string um, by playing that open uh, B string or the second string. And then hammering on, I use my middle finger for that with the left hand, but onto the third fret second string. And then I do another upstroke on the one string, the open one string. So all together now we have. And what I've created there is a little bit of a blues in uh, E. And what we're playing is in the E minor pentatonic scale. This would be pattern one, if, for those of you familiar with the blues lead course at Active Melody. Um, that's pattern one, which would be all down here. So what you can see the notes are right out of that pattern. And that's why they work, and that's why it sounds very bluesy right there. Now we're going to go back to that low six string, and watch this time we're going to switch it up, and I'm going to go...
So after we play the low six string, there's the open one string, there's the the second string or the B string. There's that third fret second string again, that note we've already played. Now we're gonna take that off and play the the open B string again. Now this is the next thing we're gonna do, and we're gonna come here, and I use my middle finger for this. It's just a slide, a pull off, and a hammer on. And it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, you uh, start here on the third fret third string, and you slide down to the second fret, take your hand finger off, kind of flick the string if you can when you take your finger off to get that pull off effect. And then that last note is on the second fret fourth string. And you hammer onto that. So you can see I'm only picking that once. So if I back up, and then it repeats. So that's a great little lick, even if you didn't learn anything else, just to take that and apply that to a, you know, a blues jam or whatever. It gives it a real kind of voodoo blues, almost a Muddy Waters kind of, uh, you know, kind of a cool vibe there. Okay, so it repeats after I do the that part, and I play that one more time. And then I stopped it there and just played the low uh, six string. So, it go so the second time through goes. Okay, and the reason that I stopped was because I have to take my hand off and get it in position to do the next thing that I'm gonna do, which is here. And by having that open E string ringing out, it allows and especially with the little overdrive like that, it'll just sustain, and I can get my finger in position to play the next part of the lead. Okay? Now watch this. So all I'm doing for this is I'm sliding up to pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale uh, for the key of E. Uh, pattern two would be right here. Remember, pattern one is here. Pattern two. So, these are the notes we're going to play. So I'm going to slide up to the, the fifth fret second string with my ring finger, and then play the third fret first string, and then real quickly jump back to the fifth fret second string. So all together it sounds like this. You can see with my right hand, there's just a downstroke, upstroke, and then a downstroke. Um, now, uh, let's let me back up. Now, as soon as I played that, I just kind of let it trail off, and then I hit the low E string again. We're wearing out that E string, but if you listen to the jam track, uh, you'll hear that there's just a there's an E seventh chord that's just sort of always there, and then it switches to a G, and just goes back and forth between those two chords. So that's why hitting this, since we're playing in the key of E, you can let that low E string, that open string, ring out as many times as you want. If you ever get lost, another little trick or tip, if you're ever lost and you're playing lead. Um, and you're not sure what to do, just hit that string, let it ring out, and fill the space while you think of where to go next. Um, I do that a lot. I, you know, in every guitar player, at some point when you're playing lead, you do get lost. That, that, that's going to happen. Um, so just remember, always remember these little safe places to go and always have some go-to licks. I do that as well. I always go back to pattern one and go into Chuck Berry or something and you know it can always get you out of it until you can think of something else. Okay. So that's what we've got. Now after I hit that low E string then I'm gonna come up and go do this. Now what I'm doing is I'm sliding up to pattern five of the minor pentatonic scale um, and it starts here on the 10th fret second string 
And we're going to slide up to the 12th fret on the second string. And then I'm going to play the uh, 10th fret first string. And then I'm going to slide back to where I started from the 12th fret down to the 10th fret on the second string. So it goes. And then we're going to go to the 8th fret second string. And then the uh, ninth fret third string, ninth fret third string, seventh fret third string, ninth fret third string. So that's what that sounds like. And you can see what we're doing is we're going back, we're going between pattern five, which is here, and pattern four, which is here. So you have pattern four, pattern five, and we're just literally sliding from one pattern to the other, still staying in the key of E. Or th so this is all E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, let me back up and play everything up to that point. Now I come down and play this lick and what I'm doing I'm actually playing the same thing that I played up here it's just played an octave lower and it's played in a different pattern but it's the same notes they're just an octave octave apart so I'm gonna start here on the second fret third string and I use my middle finger for that and then I play on the third fret second string with my pointer finger and then I'm gonna slide back down just like we did here There's the open G string, or the third string. And then we're going to conclude that on the second fret, fourth string. I'm sorry, it really uh, doesn't conclude there. That little part of it concludes there. Then I'm going to play the low sixth string, which is another E. So you have an E here and an E here. All right, so let's back up from here. Now the next thing that I played was, so after I hit that low six string, I came back and we've already played these notes. I just played the open one string and then the third fret second string. All right, so one other note that I forgot to mention, it's kind of important, is uh, when we're playing, I told you just to play this before we come up to the, but actually there's one more note. Let's just go back and play the one string or the open one string because by that string ringing out, it allows you to take your hand off the fretboard and come up to do the, the slide. It's something I failed to mention. Now, uh, we're going to go into uh, this other part, which is kind of an Elmore James sounding thing, maybe a little Bo Diddley, I'm not sure. Uh, I, heard, uh, I heard Mick Taylor play that somewhere, and I don't remember what recording it was, but I thought it was a cool lick to throw in. And for that, what I'm doing is I'm playing, it's really just an E, think of an E bar chord, E major bar chord. But I'm not playing the entire bar, I'm just playing three notes right out of the middle of it. So my pointer finger is on the 12th fret 2nd string, my middle finger is on the 13th fret 3rd string, and my ring finger is on the 14th fret 4th string. And I'm playing those three notes. And I just slide that down two frets. And what I'm doing is I'm playing in this little break, and, and you'll hear this in the jam track, it goes from an E chord to a D chord, and then right back to the groove. But I, I don't know why I wanted to do that, I just, as I was recording the jam track, I thought it'd be kind of cool to throw in kind of almost like a cream style. And the timing of it uh, breaks it up too, it makes it more interesting. It's, it's triple it, triple it, triple it, as opposed to everything else was just right on the beat, you know? So, all 
Okay, now, uh, the last little bit is... It's more of an Albert King lick, but uh, I have heard uh, Mick Taylor do that kind of thing as well, so I thought it was appropriate there. So, we're right in pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale for the key of E, and I'm on the, the uh, 10th fret, second string. And I'm going to bend it, bend it, bend it. So you're bending, releasing, bending, releasing, and then bending again. And then that's the Albert King thing. To go uh, and hit those two notes real quickly. So that's the 8th fret, second string, to the 9th fret, third string. And then I slid down. And this is kind of back to where we uh, start the, 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 the more advanced thing, which uh, those of you that are, will go on to part two will see that. But um, anyway, so after that, we're going to come down to the seventh fret, third string. And then we're going to slide. I take my ring finger, and I'm going to start here on the ninth fret, fourth string. I'm going to slide down to the seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth string. 5th fret, 5th string, 7th fret, 5th string. So you can see we're in a little box pattern. That feels very comfortable because it's it's played, you're skipping every other fret there, so you got this nice little box. Now watch this. And what I'm doing there is at this point in the song, it's this is where we do the little the uh, the E to the to to the D by adding this note. It's like playing an E chord. It, this would be the uh, the third out of the chord. So the way we play it is on the fifth fret, fourth string. We're gonna put my I'm gonna put my pointer finger down and then I'm gonna hammer onto the sixth fret, fourth string. And then watch this, my ring finger comes to the 7th fret 5th string. And it kind of goes ahead and bars there so that I can play the 5th string and the 4th string on the 7th fret. So it goes... And then we're going to go back and do the little hammer on again. That's a great little lick too. That's the kind of lick that you can use over and over again. And you could switch it up and go to the next, you know, go to the A part and do the same thing. Um, okay, then after that, to, I, I played. And what what that is is, uh, let me show you how I got to this. So remember, we played the. So we had E E E E E E D D D D. So I just took, think of the D chord. I I looked at this part of the chord and I went. Those two notes were right out of the chord. Instead of just playing the three notes out of the chord, I added this one in. So I went. And that was just kind of dancing around that chord. But think about that lick for a minute. Uh, even though it's just four notes. If you were ever playing in any key, or, in it, or whatever the chord is in a song, if, you were, if it was a G chord, for example, you could come up and go... Because you know, to make that A, G chord shape, uh, you know where those notes are uh, as, as it relates to this finger, or some of you may get with this finger. Anyway, it's a digression, but I think it's important to, to keep all of these little nuggets in, your, in mind so that uh, you have all these new ways of thinking about how you play lead. It really does uh, play off the chord uh, more than anything. Um, okay, so... Now, and that's... Oh, and then the last note there. I went from, from the 8th fret 2nd string back to the uh, 7th fret 2nd string. And then that last note is the ninth fret third string. And now we can come down and repeat it if you wanted to. Now, for those of you that are premium members and want to go on 
uh, this would also be uh, a great way to jump back into the uh, a great place you're in a good position to jump back into the part one which is more advanced and all of that um, all right so a lot of notes here uh, but um, hopefully you'll find that this one isn't it, sound, it may sound more uh, challenging than it is you realize it's it's not that difficult and when you break it down you see there's a lot of repetition we're just playing it in different different parts on the neck take these licks um, and practice them with the jam track uh, definitely practice it to get your timing um, and also practice it with a, a different jam track. It would need to be in the key of E in this case um, if you want to use the exact same licks. Um, but, but try and see if you can work those into another blues and just see, see what you can do with them. Even if you just got a little bit of it. You know, whatever you can pull out of it and make it bluesy, um, that, that'll be good. Great practice. And if you really want to take it to the next level, try something in a different key and just transpose them, figure it out, you know, where they were, how they play off the chord, and all of that. All right, let me back up. I'll play through everything one more time, and then that'll conclude part uh, one, the easier part, and then we'll go on. Actually, I'm sorry, it'll be, this is actually uh, the second part of the solo, but it's the part one video. All right, here we go. Here we go. 